When I hear the term classic, I always think of those garments in my wardrobe that I've had for 20 to 25 years. They're things that I go to all the time that give me pleasure now and have given me pleasure in the past. Hello, I'm Kenneth D. King. I'm a New York-based couture evening wear designer. I also am an adjunct professor at, of haute couture at the FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. I'm an online educator for websites, sewing websites. I also am a contributing editor for a major sewing magazine. Today I'm going to talk about a technique that in an article I did recently is called curved tux, but in the industry is called fluting. This particular garment is, is an example of this technique. And really what the technique is, it functions like paint on the wall. Underneath all of the, the embellishment here is a substructure of muslin. There's actually a princess line in here so that we have shaping. So if you're doing a garment like a strapless garment or anything like this where you actually want shape, you don't want it to be flat, you build the garment first and then you apply the detail later. What I'm going to be doing here, I've taken a shantung and for clarity, I've actually fused a backing to it so that you can tell front from back. And the first step is to press a bunch of strips and you're going to be pressing them in half along the length. The width of the strips when you're cutting them is going to be four times the finished width of the tucks that you want to make. And after you press them in half, you stretch slightly to crack the bias. Once you've got your strips prepared, there are two different ways that we can go. There's what is called just straight line fluting, and there's what I call the braid. Now the object of the game and the beauty of this particular technique is that when you separate the fabric, you don't, you don't see any of the stitches. And that's, what's, that's the beauty of this particular technique. So, for the basic technique, we start by pinning down the edges, the folded edges, of the first row. And you're, it's going to operate like shingles on a house. You start with the first row and you work up and pleats all face down if you're working up. You pin the first one down to the foundation layer. And then with a needle and thread, you want to roll the top layer back, revealing the wrong side of the fabric. And then you're just going to do just a big old running stitch. It doesn't have to be fancy quite so much. It just has to hold everything together. You don't want to worry about the stitching showing. You can actually use a contrasting thread because the stitching will be invisible in the final product. And as you sew, you take out your pins. I recommend you use a really fine silk pin for this because if you're using a silk, if you're using a silk fabric, you're going to see holes otherwise. Once we have the first layer secured, we're going to come in and lay in the next layer. Now, what I've done here is I've taken a piece of manila folder from um, the, heart, the office supply, and I've cut a jig. And this distance here is going to be the depth of the distance between, between the pleats. I'm going to use this as my measuring device. So we lay the second strip down on the first. And you want to pin really, really closely to the edge so that you can make sure that you catch all of the layers. Once this is stitched, or once this is pinned, you'll come back in and again pull this up and you're going to stitch through all the layers. So what you're doing is you're attaching the second strip while at the same time you are nailing down the upper layer of the first strip. And again, this is just a big running stitch. So you just continue this particular operation all the way down the piece and 
if you were to just continue this here, you would get this. So now I'm going to talk about the braid. The braid, I think, is a lot more fun. You can have it even or you can have it asymmetrical like we have in the vest. What you want to do here is come back to the ironing board and after you've pressed your strips in half, you're going to press them into a curve. And the amount of the curve really depends on your design and that is to your taste. Now you can, you notice that these curves take a really nice shape. That is because everything is cut on the bias. When you cut something on the bias, you're going to have a real ability to shape things to the curves that you want. I'll press one more here. So now I'm going to start with my first one and lay it down. And again, do a running stitch. People have asked me, could I do this by machine? This is one of those things that's better done by hand for a couple of reasons. One of which is you have a lot more control. You can really accurately control where these strips land. The other one is if you do it by machine, you have a tendency to shrink everything because you end up easing. So this is stitched. And now I'm going to lay the next strip next to it and overlap it. So this is going to come in like so. And you want to run this strip down to this edge here. That way you don't have any show of the strips as they braid. Again, more running stitches. secure. From here, remove the pins and we alternate. This one will come down here and you can choose to use your measuring device if you want it even or you can make it asymmetrical if that is to your taste. It seems a little bit time consuming, but when it's all said and done, it's a very, very effective way of trimming a garment with fabric that's readily available. So I'm just going to pin one more in place so you can get the idea. And again, I would repeat the process and the outcome would be this here. So now going back to the, the garment, when you're making a garment like this, you have a lot of thicknesses in here and you notice I have bound the edge along here. Instead of putting the things right sides together, sewing the seam, turning it right side out where you would get a lot of thickness here, I have instead sewn everything with the back sides of the fabric together and done what's called a French binding and it, it all kind of stylistically works. <laughs>